So this week I'm revisiting the hood ornament project, uh, hopefully for the last time. And these hood ornaments, of course, they're going to go on the ride vehicles on the Carnival ride that we're restoring. The original hood ornaments have become quite collectible, and I need five matching ones. So it seemed uh, the better option was to try to make reproductions rather than find them out on the antique market. Now, I had a number of people contact me over the last few weeks saying, hey, rather than trying to cast these out of resin and then somehow make them metallic, looking, why don't you just cast them out of metal? And that's actually a pretty good point. We can do uh, both pewter and tin in silicone molds, and that's what we're going to be tackling today. All right, it's time to take another stab at this silicone mold, and we're going to need a bit more clay for what I have in mind this time. So I'm going to heat this up in the uh, oven here. 60 degrees for 30 minutes. So my thought process this time around is just a little bit different. First of all, I'm going to mold all three pieces in one mold. That's uh, goal number one. The other thing is I'm going to be pouring this piece in a sideways orientation rather than upright. So my mold parting line will be uh, in this plane here. We need to pay more attention to venting this time than we did with the resin because that metal is gonna go in there and it's going to freeze up pretty quickly. Uh, so air is not gonna have a chance to work itself out. Let's see how this looks. Oh yeah, we're really soft. That should work nice. So I'm just over here trying to play with my alignment options and figuring out exactly how big of a mold area that I need. I think something like this is gonna work about right. Uh, now that we've got the clay, I'm gonna start pushing it in there and uh, see what we can come up with. And we are remaking this mold because in order to cast pewter, we can do it in silicone. We need to use a silicone with a higher heat tolerance. Okay, I got this pretty well smoothed out. I think it's just about time to start uh, bedding our pieces into this clay. This is my favorite tool for refining that edge. It's just like a silicone nib. And I'm trying to build the clay up to the halfway point. All right, again, I'm gonna just keep working on this, uh, get this edge refined and get it to where I'm happy with it. And then I will bring you back to show you what we got going on. I will leave links down below to this tool as well as some of the other tools I've used in this project. So I'm still working on this mold and I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do here. My first concern is I like to have a little bit of silicone around the parts so that when I pour my metal it's not too close to the edge and we're going to be really close here so I'm thinking of maybe jutting this out a little bit. The other thing is I'm still not sold on this piece. I'm still thinking about maybe moving that into the center of the ring but I'm just going to keep working this, keep refining it. You can slap this together really fast or you can take your time. It all depends on what kind of job you want. I kind of like it to be nice. I am taking my time on it. So I've started adding the sprue. I'm molding the kind of the runners and the gates right into the clay. We're going to add some venting. We're going to be using uh, these bamboo skewers. Well, I think we're good to go. Now I have made some changes. If you notice, the outline of the mold box is convoluted. So in my last video, I didn't take advantage of the fact that I could use the Lego blocks to make a more form-fitting mold box and save material. So I made a point to do that this time. So this is the Mold Max 60 from Smooth On. It's a high heat resistant silicone that we're going to be using for this project. Now the mix ratio on this is 100 to 3 uh, by weight so it's a little bit different than the last stuff we used so we're going to get uh, some of this measured out and uh, try to guesstimate what we need to fill that mold and I'll get it uh, mixed up get it vacuumed get the air out of it and then we'll pour it in the mold and uh, then I think we have to let it sit for 24 hours All right, it's the next day. We're gonna see if we can take this apart. Pull that out. Pull that out. Yeah, yeah just leave it a nice edge. Tell you what, it was a good thing that I did this indenting 
or there would not have been enough material. Because we just had enough to fill this mold. And we used half the container of the uh, Mold Max 60. So we're going to end up using the other half the container when we pour the bottom of this mold. Starting to get down to the clay now. And can we get this out? And this one. And now this. Oh, that came out nice. Much harder durometer than the Mold Max 30. Well, this is actually Mold Max 60, so it's a durometer of 60. Well, that looks great. Okay, so here's the plan. I'm going to trim off all this flashing. We'll put these pieces back in here, and then we'll build a box around it. We're going to have to put some clay in to uh, make our runners where we want our runners to be. And then we'll pour the top half. So I got this uh, pretty well started here. I got it all out of the clay. Of course, that's kind of a shame. You go through all that work just to make this. And uh, in a few seconds, it's destroyed. But in its place, we have a more permanent version here made out of silicone. And I've gone and I've made uh, a new box around it, cleaned off the clay from the pieces and put them back in to get ready for pouring the second half. I need to lay a channel of clay in here that's gonna be my runner for where the molten metal is gonna flow. I need another piece in here. And of course we have to fill these with clay temporarily so that the uh, next batch of silicone doesn't fill them. Once that's done, we'll be ready to pour this. So I think we're just about done here. Uh, got all the pieces cleaned up, put back in. I added some clay in here. I've got clay uh, filling both of the vent holes. And then uh, I filled the sprue yeah, the fill point here, and I created a kind of a hump here, which will be a bit of a well for when you pour the metal in. Uh, this runs over here and through here and gates into the bottom of this part and the tip of this ring and then into the side of the base. So I think we're in pretty good shape. Like I said, the only thing that I missed was I should have had a vent uh, on the other side of this piece at its high spot an event for this ring. But if I need them, I can always pierce it uh, later after the fact to correct that problem. Now, one of the nice things is with casting metal, if I do pour these and I have uh, problems with the pieces filling, all I have to do is remelt that metal. It's not uh, once and done like it is with resin. It's just about ready to go. I need to put a mold release on this. The uh, Ease Release 200 that I use, spray all this down. That'll prevent the new silicone from sticking to the old silicone and uh, permanently molding itself together, which uh, obviously be not what we wanted. Next, I'll mix up the uh, silicone here. Three parts per weight. That'd be 15. Well, there's 15. stuff has a 40 minute working time, so I'm not in a big hurry to get it in there. You know, there's enough in here that it is worth trying to add an extra border wall around this. No sense leaving it in the container. This makes me happy because I was concerned about uh, the clearance on the bottom of the mold from the bottom of the ring to what would actually be my tabletop. It seemed like the silicone was going to be pretty thin there. So any little extra bit we can put in makes me happy. So we got a delivery today and uh, hopefully this little toy here is going to help us to up our game a little bit on this carnival ride restoration. Uh, that is assuming that it's not just a glorified toy. So we're going to have to get it out of the box and uh, give it a look through and see exactly what we got. So this is a small electric uh, melting furnace, they call it. Uh, it's actually a little bit overkill for what I want to do. 
I don't need the heat that this thing can supposedly put out for melting pewter, but it, it puts it in a nice form. It has a, you know, crucible and uh, it kind of self-contains. Let's see what we got in here. Got some instructions. This is supposed to be this one here. Extremely quick shipping on it. I was very impressed. It took like two days to get here. They actually have stock of these in New Jersey, so when you purchase them, you're not having to wait for them to come from overseas. Uh, you have the tongs for the crucible. And uh, the proper power cord for US power systems. So, so far we're doing all right. But let me get this flipped over and we'll, we'll pull the box off the top of it. I believe this is a graphite crucible that's supplied with it. Well, it looks pretty nice. Let's try not to drop that. This is actually a little bigger than I expected it to be. That's what she said. So I guess uh, before I do anything, I should have a look at the instructions and make sure that there's not some sort of uh, conditioning routine that you're supposed to run to, I don't know, slowly heat it up the first time. I don't see any voids in the casting or anything of the ceramic. I mean, it looks built all right, assuming that it's uh, electrically stable and doesn't burn my shop down. All right, a few days have passed since we poured this. I actually got called out of town for work, and uh, so this has been sitting here, and I've just been uh, dying to get back to it to see what it looks like. So we're going to start pulling this thing apart and uh, see how we did. There we go. I think we're in pretty good shape here. All right, so we've got the furnace plugged in and we've got the crucible in place. We're just going to let this heat up. So prior to pouring the metal in the mold, they recommend coating the inside of the mold with talc and that reduces the surface tension and lets the metal flow better. My only fear is that uh, if the pewter flows out, melts the rubber bands and the whole thing comes flying apart, that'll be exciting. I've got this uh, pewter bar here. I'm just gonna let it feed in. I can see some metal down in this vent, but I don't see any in the others. Now we had a little little blow through right here, but boy, that looks promising. Our mold tore. Shoot, I was scared of that. I think we might just be able to pin that back together. That's all it needs to do is hold it in place long enough to pour. We should be able to remelt this and try it again. All right, we're gonna give this another go. I've pinned the mold back together where it was damaged, and I've added a couple extra vent holes in those locations that I originally suspected we would need them. And we're not getting a full pour. This was worse than last time. We didn't fill in here. We didn't get all the way around. I think maybe I need to pour hotter. Hopefully third time will be the charm. We've heated up to the maximum of what the silicone will accept. So hopefully gonna get the best flow out of it here. Nope. We just still didn't get the whole ring. But the torpedo looks pretty good. Right? And we've gotten much further here than we did before. The base looks great. The torpedo, we could polish that out. It's got a little bit of a divot there, but it did pretty good. We just need to get more material over here. You can see our venting worked here, 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 and here. 
Our venting didn't work here, though. We never got that far. Running the pewter hotter really helped. And yeah, we need a vent right here. So I have another idea here. I think if I cut a V groove in this surface right here, what that's going to allow to do is for the metal pouring into here to then cut across here to help fill this ring from this side as well. It would act as a bit like a riser internally. And I think that might help. Unfortunately, uh, based on what's left in the crucible, even if I did get this working, uh, I don't have enough metal. So I'm gonna have to order some more pewter to make this work. Uh, so unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to finish this project this week. I'm uh, not real happy about it, but hey, that is what happens. One thing I didn't look at was the backside to see if we're still seeing the uh, screw sticking through there or not. Oh, that's good. Yeah, we had no trouble that time with the head sticking through. So our torpedo looks good, and our base looks good. All we gotta do is get the ring to work. Here we go. So that's a good piece. It needs a little cleanup here, but that's a perfectly fine piece. And that should polish up. So I'm really pleased with how this turned out. Of course, I would have been much more pleased had I actually been able to finish the project, but that just wasn't in the cards this time. And you've made it pretty clear to me that you would rather see more frequent updates than uh, possibly seeing a whole project from beginning to end. So that's what we're aiming to do. I'm gonna try to get out a video every week, uh, but it's gonna mean you're gonna see both the successes and the failures along the way. Uh, but you'll be uh, staying right on top of where I am with this project. If you wanna see how this project started, click that link to the left and come along for the ride.